हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू बेस्ट टेक्निक चैनल प्लीज लाइक कमेंट एंड सब्सक्राइब दिस चैनल थैंक यू द लॉ ऑफ अट्रैक्शन इन एक्शन पुटिंग द लॉ ऑफ अट्रैक्शन इनटू एक्शन नरेटेड बाय जॉन हॉक्स इंट्रोडक्शन हेलो एंड वेलकम टू आवर शॉर्ट इंट्रोडक्टरी गाइड ऑन द पावर ऑफ द लॉ ऑफ अट्रैक्शन वेल मोर इंपोर्टेंटली how to put the law of attraction into action for your life if you're reading this book chances are you have come across the phrase law of attraction at least once before you probably have watched movies or heard of movies like the secret that's how many americans became aware of the law of attraction ever since the word got out about this body of knowledge more and more people are talking about it on social media mainstream media and among their circle of friends and associates interestingly enough The more people talk about it, the more mysterious it became. It seemed that the more people kicked around the term law of attraction, the murkier it seemed. Now, it's very easy to see why this is the case because a lot of people are skeptical. In fact, according to these people, the law of attraction doesn't exist. They are so close-minded and they are so dead set against this type of thinking that they don't even think of the possibility that it could be real. Others are more likely to believe, but they are still dismissive. for a variety of reasons they can't quite accept that the law of attraction would actually deliver something of tangible value to people's lives even if we were to filter out these people among those who are left there's still a tremendous amount of confusion why simple overuse lack of clarity and a tremendous amount of subjectivity the bottom line is that regardless of the confusion surrounding the law of attraction it is real it changes people's lives It has a direct and profound impact on how people think, the things they say, and most importantly, the things they do. The law of attraction has helped people get over fears, attain their desires, meet the right people, and otherwise make their dreams come true. It really all boils down to using the right framework. In the next part of the guide, we're going to start the foundation of putting the law of attraction into action by covering six common myths of the law of attraction. which hold a lot of people back. Part 1: Six Common Myths of the Law of Attraction. Unfortunately, a lot of people hang on to six common myths about the law of attraction, and that's why it doesn't work out for them. Let's go of this myth and you can rest assured that the law of attraction can have an impact on your life. What are these myths? Let's find out. Myth number 1: The law is magical. For far too many people this type of thinking is really just magical thinking. We're talking about witches, wizards and the supernatural. The good news? It isn't magical. In fact, it's the complete opposite. The law of attraction involves how people edit and perceive their personal reality. Accept it or not, believe it or not, like it or not, you have a direct and profound role in how you perceive reality, act on it and ultimately shape it. The kind of life you are living right now is by and large a product of your decisions. What do you think your decisions came from? Let me tell you. It's not like somebody pointed a gun at your head and told you to make one bad decision after another. Chances are, you have a certain attitude, a certain mindset that leads you to make decisions a certain way. Now, if you presented all the opportunities that you had to another person who had a different mindset, Chances are they may end up with a completely different life. There is nothing magical in this situation. The law of attraction works with your innit all to human ability to perceive, shape and ultimately edit your reality. Absolutely no magic involved. Myth number 2. This is all just self-hypnosis or delusion. Another line of criticism points to the fact that since people are enraged in affirmations or consistent or conscious and purposely thought that this is really just an exaggerated form of self-hypnosis you are essentially just playing mind games with yourself well not quite the law works because it interacts with how your mind shapes reality self-delusion implies that you are looking at things that don't exist self-hypnosis suggests that you are seeing things that aren't there well if you follow this guide correctly you will see things that are there You're going to be dealing with reality, and it all begins with how you choose to perceive and act on your personal reality. Instead of hypnosis or delusion, 
you're actually learning the skill of purposely thinking. Myth number three, the law of attraction is just wishful thinking. It's easy to see why people think this way, because a lot of the mainstream depictions of the law of attraction involves people engaged in affirmations. They say certain truth to themselves, oftentimes in front of a mirror. In the minds of too many people, this is all there is to the law of attraction. No, it isn't. That's just a tiny fraction of what goes on. It's an important part, but by no means forms the bulk of this very important process. The law works because it drives you to take action. Let me tell you one thing. You can engage in all the wishful thinking you want, but your life is never going to change until and unless you take action on the things you purposefully think about. The law is able to produce all sorts of amazing changes in people's lives because they are finally, for once in their lives, driven into action. Myth number four. This is all just about affirmations. Since the common media portrayal of the law of attraction involves people saying certain power words and power statements to themselves, it's very easy to dismiss all this as just self-talk. It's very easy to assume the attitude that the law of attraction is really just about talking about certain realities and willing them to happen in your life. No, it doesn't work that way, because you're not just talking about you talking. It requires you total being. For people to talk, they have to have a certain emotional state. For them to reach that state, they must be thinking a certain way. There has to be a certain assumptions and even expectations that have to be in place for them to even talk. And the law of attraction goes beyond talk because this affirmation has to eventually lead to you changing your actions. You have to understand that your life is a result of your decision and nobody else's. Start making better decisions and you will find yourself at a better place. The law simply just makes this process more, more purposeful, transparent and rational. That's how it works. And it operates on many levels. It changes who you are inside, as well as your perception of others. Myth number five. It's just a one-time thing. For the law of attraction to produce massive positive effects of your life, it involves changing your habits. These changes are so profound, so deep and so far-reaching that they can turn your life around and they can last a lifetime. This is the furthest thing from a one-time thing. Myth number six. It requires special time or arcane training. You don't have to spend hours upon hours practicing the law of attraction for you to change your life. In fact, you can incorporate this practice into the daily details of your life. Indeed, for many people it has become such a seamless part of their lives that they don't even notice. It's just one of the things they do. This enables them to reap amazing results each and every time. And everything flows smoothly because the law of attraction is an integral part of what they do every day and who they are as people. Now with all the six powerful myths about the law of attraction out of the way, this guide aims to deliver daily practical steps you can use to turn the law of attraction from a concept into a reality. This reality can enrich your life. It can enable you to adopt the right habits. It can enable you to live a life of purpose, meaning and control. The bottom line is actually simple. Are you ready to be the one that makes things happen in your life instead of the poor soul who constantly asks around in confusion what happened? You have to choose. There really are two options in life. Either you are the person making things happen or you are the poor, unfortunate fellow that things happen to. Which will it be? Part 2. Three Steps to Using the Law of Attraction Overview What follows in the next three parts are the meat of the book and is an exposition on the three steps you need to take to make the law work for you. Starting with step one, which is be clear about what you want. Before we get into it further, here's a few guidelines on using the three steps. Make sure you follow them, don't skip any, take as long as you want with each step, just don't skip any step. Ideally, you should master each step before moving on to the next one. Now, let's get started with step one. Step number one, be clear about what you want. Even if you don't adopt the law of attraction, or even if you're clueless regarding this concept, if you're unclear about what you want in life, it should be no surprise when you're frustrated. Seriously, 
you shouldn't be shocked that you can't seem to achieve any of your dreams because you're unclear what those dreams are in the first place. Believe it or not, most people fail because they are unclear about what they really want. They think they know what they want, but they don't. They end up fussy thinking, which leads to unfocused action. They move with no certainty. They take action with no intense focus. And this leads to a very predictable series of frustrations or outright failures. Oftentimes, people are unclear because they're simply trying to live other people's lives. Your parents might have all these big plans for you, but those might not be the things that you want to do with your life. I can't even imagine how many lives are ruined when people try to live other people's lives for them. Other people desire certain things precisely because people they respect and admire desire those same things. Well, we are all different people. Just because people that you like want a big house and five cars in the suburb doesn't necessarily mean that that's the ideal lifestyle for you. Maybe your values are different, maybe you look at the world differently, maybe you prefer being a very educated, experienced and well-traveled person. This doesn't necessarily mean living in a big house, having many cars or having a lot of possessions. Your wealth is mostly internal. Different people, different values. Unfortunately, if we desire things because of peer pressure, or we feel that we want certain things because this is what is expected of us, it's very easy for us to live unfocused lives. We just go through the motions. We just follow some sort of preset path. We're not exactly clear why we're doing it, but we're going through the process. This is a surefire way to live a life of frustration at some level or another. You need clarity. Thankfully, there are three simple steps to make this happen. The three steps to clarity. First, you need to ask yourself how bad you want what you think you want. Do you really want that big house? Do you really want those five cars? Do you really want to travel the world every two years? If you think the answer is yes, then wrap your mind around these questions. What will you give up to make those things happen? How hard will you work? How long will you go for it? These are important questions that you need to ask yourself because they go a long way in determining whether you are just going along with what other people want for you or what you think other people desire or there's really something about what you desire. Maybe it really speaks to your innermost values and needs but you wouldn't know for sure until you ask yourself these questions. The next step is to subject your idea of what you want to the journalist's six key questions. What do journalists normally ask when they come across a story? Well, they ask who, what, where, when, why, and how. You should do the same with the things that you think you desire in life. Who is it for? Who is the ultimate beneficiary? Who is involved? What is it really? Does it change over time? Is it complete? Does it go through a process? What parts makes it up? Where do you need to go? Where does it take place? Where did the idea come from? When will it happen? What kind of steps do you have to go through to make the big things happen? Why are you doing this? What is it in it that motivates you? It is sustainable? Does it speak to a deep and profound personal truth? How do you go about doing it? What kind of resources do you need? Ask yourself these questions for starters. There are many others related to these questions. The more questions you ask, the clearer it becomes. Any hesitation on your part becomes apparent. If you are in any way, shape or form fussy about the things that you desire, well, it will come up if you ask yourself these questions. Of course, you have to honestly ask this. You can't just go through the motions. Finally, you have to ask yourself, can you visualize what you want completely? This is crucial. If you want to be clear about what you desire, you must be able to visualize it as a total package. There must be no missing details. It can be shallow and it can be a broad outline. It has to be complete. It has to have some sort of internal integrity. If you are able to do this, congratulations, because most people are not able to do this. Why? Most people are just daydreaming. They have a nice vision of the future, complete with a range of positive emotions. The reason why people daydream is not because they are planning for the future. Instead, they want to achieve some sort of emotional state. For example, if you have been unemployed for six months and money's running tight, 
you can easily fall into the trap of daydreaming about being in a business suit, getting a lot of respect, and spending a lot of time at that corner office. But that daydream is worthless because you're doing it only to get that range of comforting emotions that enables you to get out from under the pressure during now. You're under a lot of pressure to find a job, put food on the table, or pay the rent. When you daydream, it feels like all of these troubles are gone because you get that glimmer of power, satisfaction and a sense of completion because you imagine yourself in that corner office being at the top of the corporate chain. This is not enough. The positive emotions that you get when you are daydreaming are very powerful indeed, but they are not enough. This is not the kind of visualization you should do to clarify your personal vision so you can make it happen in your life through the law of attraction. You have to do something else. It's not completely different, but it's different enough. Be like Michael Phelps. I know that's a tall order, but hear me out. Michael Phelps, of course, is the greatest Olympic gold medal winner of all time. He has won the most gold medals in the Olympic. No small feat. Talk about amazing discipline. Talk about amazing personal power. When asked about his secret to success, he was pretty straightforward. He said that he has this technique where he would play a mental movie of him winning each and every swim meet. When pressed, he said, and was pretty straightforward, I would play this imaginary DVD of me jumping into the pool and stroke after stroke, I would play that image until I feel like I'm almost there. And then I would essentially act out that movie when it's time for me to perform. When you are able to visualize with that much detail, you become very focused on an alternate reality. You then visualize where you start at the end, where you won the gold medal, got the amazing job, met the perfect member of the opposite sex that can be your future husband or wife, or found the perfect job or business opportunity. You visualize everything in clear, three-dimensional details. And then, here's the secret, you walk yourself from the end all the way to the beginning. In other words, you imagine yourself with a completely different life, in a completely different place, and then you rewind the DVD, so to speak, until you end up to where you are now. Then you play it forward again, and you keep repeating this over and over until you get a roadmap. That is the difference between the Michael Phelps type of mastery and unstoppable victory and simple daydreaming. Sadly, the vast majority of people would rather daydream because there is a quick and cheap emotional payoff. But all these positive emotions are not going to put food on your table. You definitely cannot eat them. Here are the steps that successful practitioners of the law of attraction use to turn their vision into a reality they can see, smell, taste, touch and hear. Every day, they visualize their vision. They write it down, they read it, erase it and write it down again. The next morning, they read their vision, visualize it, erase it and write it down again. When you keep doing this, you start burning physical channels into your brain's neural complex. According to research studies, when people keep repeating the same thought over and over again, it actually creates physical connections in how their brains are wired. They're not just thinking about an idea. They're not just kicking around the concept in their minds. It actually has a physical effect on them. It actually changes the physiology of their brain. By living out that vision and walking yourself from the beginning to the end and all the way back again, and then erasing the vision and reciting it or writing it out from memory, you create those physical connections. And eventually, these physical connections have a profound impact on how you view reality, how you feel about the situations you find yourself in, what you choose to talk about out of habit and your behavior. Let me tell you, the world doesn't care about your feelings. It couldn't care less. It doesn't have the luxury of time to indulge you in that. It also doesn't care about your intentions or what motivates you. Who cares? Hell, after all, is paved with all sorts of good intentions. But do you know what makes the world pay attention? When you actually do something. When you're clear with your vision, the law of attraction starts to work in your life because you now have a clearer map and all the things that you need to be in place to take action are slowly beginning to change. The way you look at your reality, the way you connect the dots in your life, the way you feel about certain things in your life, all of these are happening. They may not be all that perceptible to you, but they are taking place. Step 2. Focus on what you want. Now that you have a clear idea of your vision and you know it inside out, 
because you visualize it every day, you read it out loud, you erase it and you write it down from memory day after day, it becomes very, very clear. And the second step of the law of attraction is to focus on it. Now, focus is not just a simple word. It involves heavy lifting in your mind. The bottom line, your overarching goal with step number two is to believe in your vision. Believe that it's possible. First, you need to believe that it's possible. Yes, it's possible that there is a job opening in that corner office. Yes, it's possible that there is this huge mansion on the other side of town. It's possible that people can develop this successful business. Whatever your vision is, believe that it is possible. This is the key. This is the bedrock of success, because if you don't believe your vision can come to pass, then you're just wasting your time. You may end up undermining yourself or sabotaging yourself because, at the back of your mind, you're saying to yourself, well, I'm just playing mind games with myself. This stuff is not real. Who am I fooling? Then it all falls apart because you did not believe in your vision. Believe that it is possible. Believe you can do it. The next step is to believe that you can do it. Not somebody else, not your friend, not your neighbor, not your brother, not your sister, not your parents but you, individually, personally, can do it. This puts you in the middle of the picture. You are no longer just looking at your vision as some sort of speculation. This is no longer in the realm of theory or things that would be nice if there happened. Instead, you're putting it right smack dab in the middle of your life because it's you who can do it. That's what you believe. Believe that your vision is clear. Next, you have to believe that your vision is clear. If you did step number one correctly, this should come easily. A clear vision leaves no room for interpretation. A clear vision has no blind spots. In short, there are spots that you have to fill in based on your set of circumstances, but there are no blind spots that will flat out surprise you or knock you back. Everything is clear, just like Michael Phelps' mental movie that he keeps playing for ultimate success. Act on your vision. After that, you have to believe that you can act on your vision. This is extremely important. If you believe this, then it means that you have the resources or you can have access to the resources. Also, it means that this is the right time because you can act on it. It isn't something that is speculative. It isn't something that is locked away until certain things fall into place at a certain time in the future nobody knows. Instead, you believe that you can act on it, right here, right now. It doesn't matter whether it's a small baby step forward, there is an action you can take right now. Once you're able to do that, and this is a big step, the next step is crucial. For the law of attraction to work for you, you have to believe that your vision has already happened. This is where your faith really blows up because you know that you're just messing around and playing games with yourself if you cannot get it to this point. You have to make it to this point. Believe that it has already happened. How? Very simple. In your vision is to meet a very wonderful member of the opposite sex to be your future husband or wife. I got news for you. People meet the right one every single day. If your vision is to become a successful business person, guess what? There are tons of people who are doing that. Allow yourself the power of regularity, because when you assume that these things regularly happen, then the law of attraction start working to reshape your personal ability to edit your reality. You start thinking a different way. You start talking about things in a different way. Your values are different. Your assumptions and expectations have changed. And this leads you to make better decisions and taking actions that gets you closer and closer to your grand vision. A crucial step in this direction is the belief that your grand vision, no matter how lofty it may seem, has already happened. You're not doing anything new or something far-fetched. It's not like you're trying to hatch dragons from extinct stone eggs. You're aiming for something that happens. Help yourself out by using belief boosters. Early on, I learned that if you try to will yourself into believing certain visions according to the law of attraction, it takes too much work. It's very easy to get run down. Ultimately, you feel the pressure of the other parts of your life and it really takes a lot away from you. I discovered that there are certain tools I can use to help me boost my belief. When I use these things in conjunction with each other, they create a self-sustaining, belief-boosting 
or energizing system. Reading Positive Quotes First, I devote a few minutes of my day to reading positive quotes involving my vision. They might not be directly related or extremely specific to my vision, but they are close enough. These positive quotes help me step motivated. They remind me that people have achieved what I'm trying to do in the past and they were able to overcome because they focused. They kept the main thing the main thing. They kept their eyes on the prize. These positive quotes that I repeat over and over again start sinking down into my heart. They become part of me. They become part of the assumptions I make. Case studies. Next, I also read case studies of actual people that have done what I want to do. If you are honest about your project, it's not really hard to do. Regardless of how grand you are or how seemingly massive your personal project is, somebody has done it before. If you feel that it's new or completely novel, you probably haven't been searching enough. You haven't done extensive research. Keep looking. You will find at least one case study that is similar enough to what you're trying to do. Study that story. Be inspired by it. Pay attention to their ups and downs. Pay attention to their challenges, but focus on what happened at the end. At the end of the story, the person won. End of story. Allow yourself to be motivated by that. Biographies. Another belief booster that I use involves biographies of people who inspired me. These are people who started with nothing. Many times people would laugh at them, dismiss them, call them crazy or idiots. But against all odds, these individuals were able to overcome themselves. I'm also particularly interested in biographies of people who overcame themselves. Believe me, the number one person who will try to sabotage you, undermine you, drag you down and hold you back is yourself. You have to recognize how you limit yourself and be ready for it. You have to be on the lookout for the many games you will try to play on yourself, so keep waiting or you don't try hard enough. Look at biographies, read through them, be inspired by them. Look for people who have overcome hurdles placed by other people or, most importantly, hurdles they themselves set to sabotage their own success. Make it part of your daily routine. Finally. Make all this focus part of your daily routine. Invest time in it. Consciously say to yourself, I believe in my vision. And then start thinking about your vision. Use belief boosters. You may need to spend quite a bit of time at this stage before you take it to the next level. But it's definitely worth it. Integrate your belief into your daily life. Prior to this point, a lot of the things that you are doing simply just involved your mind and your emotions. As powerful as the human brain and heart are concerned, for things to change in your life, you have to act on your vision. I personally was able to do this using the following system. I would read my vision, focus on the case studies that I have researched, and give myself affirmations. I would repeat these affirmations consciously, purposefully, and slowly. I would savor every word. I would try to visualize every word. I would study how they flow into each other and what their impact is. I would figure out the different meanings that they suggest and really get into them and feed them into my visualization. After everything is clear to me, I would erase or rip up my written version of my vision and then, after a few minutes have passed, from my memory, I would rewrite my vision. When I go through this process, I am reprogramming my personal operating system. I am training my mind to override doubt, self-imposed limitations painful trauma or negative memories from the past and worthless worries about the future. Instead, I focus on my vision. You should do this first thing in the morning and the last thing at night. This is crucial because when you are sleeping, your mind is engaged in alternative reality. It's clearing up your memory base, but it's making all sorts of reconnections. If your vision is an integral part of that, it becomes part of this reality that your mind brings into fruition. And the best part is that it happens subconsciously. You start behaving a certain way without being able to put your finger on why those changes have happened, but it's actually because of your willful action. It can actually be traced to the first thing you read and acted on in the morning and the last thing you read and acted on at night. If you keep doing this, you start consciously change what you say to yourself. You're no longer calling yourself an idiot. You're staying away from calling yourself a loser or any other negative self-talk. 
Just as importantly, you start changing how you talk to others. You no longer say, I don't have the money, I can't do it, who am I, or the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. That goes away. Instead, people start hearing somebody new. You start talking by planting scenes of life into people's lives instead of weeds like, I can't do it, or what do you think you are? You have no money, it's failed before, what makes you think it's going to happen this time around? All those weeds, I call them mental weeds, start to shrivel and die, and you start planting seeds of life. In addition to changes in how you talk, you start changing the way you look. You probably have heard the saying, to make a million bucks, you have to first dress like a million bucks. Well, there's a lot of truth to that, because it reflects your self-image. It reflects the type of person you see yourself being. Again, going back to Michael Phelps, he doesn't see himself as the last guy in the race. Instead, he sees himself as the first guy, winning time after time, all day, every day. To be a winner, you have to start talking like one. Once you're talking like a winner, it's a good idea to start dressing like one and walking like one. Eventually, you'll start acting like a winner. But you have to start somewhere, and it all starts in your head. Eventually, it makes this internal change and reprogramming start manifesting itself in how you talk and how you look, which in turn changes how people perceive you. If people saw a bum before, and now you show up in an Armani suit and you treat everybody like a million bucks, what do you think will happen? They will treat you like a million bucks. And soon enough, since you already believe you are a million bucks, and people saying you are a million bucks, it becomes a reality. That's how you man up. That's how you step up to the challenge and take life by the ears and take control. Quick note on the importance of action and manifestation. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this needs to be reiterated. The world does not care about your feelings. Get that through your head. Wrap your mind around it. Write it in stone. Sure, a lot of people talk a good game around you. They try to make you think that your feelings matter, and they do, to a certain extent, with your friends and family members. But for the rest of the world, feelings don't matter because everybody has feelings. If you want the world to respect you and to take you seriously, you only have to do one thing. Take action. When you do things, you change your world because now you are serious. The world knows you are not screwing around. You mean it. How does it know? Well, you change your actions. You have results to show for it. That's how the world judges you. Which brings me to the last stage of the law of attraction, manifestation. There are all sorts of hooky books written about this stage. In fact, they are written in such a sloppy and careless way that makes you think that this is all magical. There's nothing magical about this. Manifestation really boils down to believing so much in your vision that it changes your emotional state. If you can get to this level, the law of attraction is working for you. Why? Once you get to this stage, it's like being on a roller coaster. If you're being on a roller coaster, you know that there is a part of your trip where you go up to this steep incline and there start to slow down until a large chunk of the roller coaster is over that hump and then boom, it goes down at a high rate of speed. That's where you feel like your guts are in your mouth. Manifestation is getting to that hump because at that point, the world has no choice but to sit up and pay attention because you have allowed your vision, which you have carefully selected, rehearsed and fine-tuned to change your emotional states and all bets are off because your emotions are involved, your actions start to change. Let your emotional state change your mental habits. This is where you flip the switch from negativity to possibility, from possibility to positivity, and from positivity you go on to probability. Once you're at that probability stage, congratulations because the change is imminent. We all start from negativity. At some level or another, we feel we can't do it. We don't have access to the right stuff, we're not connected, and so on and so forth. There are just tons of toxic excuses that we're stewing in. That's where we start. But you focus so much on your vision that you are able to move from negativity to possibility. This is where you start thinking. Yes, it's possible. It's doable. It's not out of the ordinary. I can't write this off. It can't happen. And then from there you get to positivity when you feel pumped up that with the right focus, with the right planning and with the right faith, 
this is going to happen. It's not like it can't happen, but it is going to happen. And then from there, you go to probability, which is, I've already put in a lot of time, and the chances of this happening is very high. And then you get to imminent change, where you're basically just inches away. You can smell it. You can feel the heat coming off your personal vision become real. Let your change mental habits lead you to a change actions. Let it happen. Again, going back to the roller coaster example, when you let your emotional state change your mental habits, it's like you're going over that hump. And after enough of the roller coaster have gone over that hump, you cannot stop the roller coaster because it's going downhill at a crazy rate of speed. That's what makes it so terrifying and fun at the same time. That's exactly what happens once you make the switch to that emotional state because it becomes harder and harder to stop this chain reaction until you let your changed mental habits lead to change actions. Let it happen. Stop doubting yourself. Give up on second guessing yourself. Let it happen. Small steps lead to big changes. Now don't get too excited. Profound changes often happen in small steps, but guess what? Even a tiny step forward is still a step forward. Take one step after another. Get used to it. Sure, there are baby steps, but get used to the small steps happening after each other, one right after the other. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then start taking larger steps. That's how manifestation works. No magic, no arcing tricks, no bullshit. It works with how your mind already works. Unfortunately, the way our mind normally works is that we often wait for things to just reach a desperate and sad state that we feel like we really have no other choice but to make a move. When you unleash the power of the law of attraction in your life, manifestation becomes more purposefully, orderly and systematic. You don't have to wait until the last minute. You don't have to put yourself in a situation where you're only driven to act when all the chips are down. Instead, you are in control. You call the shots. Things play out according to plan. Step number three, accept what you want. I hope that it's very clear at this point that when you reach the manifestation stage and you start taking larger and larger steps, eventually you get to where you're going. You get to the end point of your vision. Unfortunately, a lot of people trip themselves up with the law of attraction. They can see their desires materializing during the manifestation stage, however, they don't get around to claiming it. They doubt it. They say to themselves, well, I just got lucky, or well, what do you know, it's working, but it is going to be permanent. What if it, this is just a one-time thing? What if somebody was just helping me out and doing things out of their kindness of their heart? And on and on it goes. The bottom line is, they don't claim it. Instead, they doubt it and think that it isn't real. And the worst part to all of this is that, at the back of their heads, they feel they just got lucky and, ultimately, they don't deserve it. How sad. Seriously, it's like going on a journey of a thousand miles, and by the time you get to your final destination, you say to yourself, well, this is not what I expected. Or, I'm at the wrong spot, I'll go back. Pathetic. And this is precisely the kind of game a lot of people play. Now, it's sad because those people are actually a tiny fraction of the ones that started the journey. Most people don't even get to this stage. It really is quite troubling that when that surviving fraction of strivers and seekers make it to this stage, they somehow, some way, sabotage themselves. You have to accept what you want. Accept it mentally by saying to yourself and proving to yourself that you deserve it. It's not like something handed you that job you got you in that corner office. It's not like somebody, out of their kindness of their heart, threw you a freebie and gave you a multi-million dollar contract. Accept the fact that you put in the work. It took planning, it took vision, it took sacrifice. Also, accept it emotionally. Say to yourself, I'm worthy. Sure, other people may be smarter than me, they may be more driven than me, they may be more connected, but they failed. I got this. I am worthy. I am good enough. This is me. Act like one who has accepted the reality of what you desire. Understand that this is not a one-off thing. Understand that your vision became real precisely because you have changed inside. This is just the last part. This is actually just the icing on the cake. You have manifested the change that you have chosen inside. It's all purposeful. 
It's all by control, and you did it. So accept this reality. Accept your power to affect this reality because you did not engage in some sort of black magic. You did not cheat people. You did not use some sort of magical field that transformed you. No, you changed your mindset. You changed your attitude. You went from somebody who kept saying, I don't have the money, to somebody who keeps saying, how can I afford that? What do I need to do? Do you see the difference? Accept that reality that you desire has become real. Recognize the steps to get you to where you are. Don't fear them. Don't dismiss them in your mind saying, oh, these are one-time things. They're not going to happen again. I just got lucky. I'm telling you, if you want the law of attraction to become real in your life, and most importantly, to become a tool that would enable you to unlock the unstoppable winner that you truly are, you have to stop believing in luck. You make your own luck. You start making your own luck when you start thinking a certain way. You change the direction of the fortune in your life when you start changing how you deal with your emotions. Recognize the step that got to your vision and don't fear them. Don't think that as you go through this process that you jinx it, that somehow, some way, you are setting in motion a process that prevents you from repeating the same results. Just accept it. Feel good about it. And here's the secret. And it really blew my mind the first time I did this. I looked at the positive thing that has happened, and I associated with my changed attitude, emotions and actions. It's hard to do this the first time around, but the more you achieve the result that you desire, the clearer things become and you are able to make the association stick. But you need to make it stick so you would reach a point where you start to only start thinking about certain things and feeling certain things, and you know that you can take the necessary actions. There is no resistance there anymore. It doesn't seem like you're going out on a limb or you're trying something completely untested and unproven. In fact, this might become second nature to you, that you just jump in with both feet. It becomes clear from the get-go. Create an upward spiral of reinforcing actions. When you create a positive association with the reality of your vision, again, it has become real. And with your interventions and your plans and your emotional states, you can create an upward spiral of reinforcing associations. In fact, if you do this right, it becomes almost unbreakable. Act on your dream. Here's how you do it. First, you act on your dream. You achieve it. You've done it before. You can do it again. So do it. Once you have achieved the results, or even if you have achieved any result, feel good about it. Make it burn. Make it stand out in your mind. Feel it intensely. Desire that positive feeling again. Next, after some time has passed, desire that positive feeling again. Be so motivated by the positive feeling that you act out your dream again. And then when things happen, feel good about the results. Make it intense. And keep repeating this process until you become motivated by the positive feeling you get when you act out your dreams. This enables you to have the power that you need to remove limiting beliefs. I'm telling you, as much as our parents loved us, they are also the first sources of our limiting beliefs. Now, granted, as a parent, it is very practical and understandable as to why parents do this. If I did not tell my child that putting his or her hand over the stove fire is not going to burn them, they probably would end up harming themselves, not necessarily with fire, but with something else. But the more our parents train us to not do things or to hold back, the more they start chipping away our spirit. So you have to recapture some of that and reshape it. Transform it from the limiting beliefs that hold you back to positive guidance that keeps you out of trouble, but at the same time, give you enough freedom and latitude to live a more effective life. The same goes with emotional habit. Regardless, focus on what you achieve. Accept that you can achieve in the future and that you have achieved in the past and focus on the fact that you can change things for the better. Once you have this, then you can compare your negative beliefs versus what you achieved. And if you do this right, you start chipping away on your negative beliefs. Now they're not entirely going to go away because, like I said, some of them are useful. But just like a lot of the things that we've picked up from our childhood, it's very easy to just layer on insecurities, fears, guilt, remorse, and all sorts of toxic emotions until we don't know which is which. By thinking purposely using the law of attraction, you start wearing all this down until you are left with a bare necessities and everything else is gone, and this gives you tremendous freedom.
Conclusion Congratulations on making it to the end of this short, introductory guide to putting the law of attraction into action in your life. You may be surprised to know that the majority of people who start something never complete it. Take your time and progress at your own pace. This is not a race. The more you understand and comprehend what is happening when you use the law of attraction, the better. If you really want to succeed, then everything you do with the law of attraction must be with long-term planning in mind. These changes you are making are not meant to be temporary. They're meant to be part of a new lifestyle that you follow in order to manifest your dream life. Believe in the law of attraction. Lastly, believe in the law of attraction. Believe that it works. Believe that it will work for you. Believe that you can do it. And most importantly, believe that you have to do it now. Not tomorrow, now. Not next week, now. Why? If you fail to start today and indulge yourself with the concept of tomorrow, things are not going to happen. As the old saying goes, life is what happens when you're making other plans. Maybe there's something that happens with your kids, maybe there's something that happens at work, maybe there's something that happens in some other area of your life, and the best laid plans in the world are not going to stand a chance, that you have to get out of the way. So you kick your plans to tomorrow, you postpone it, and then after that, you say that you're going to do it tomorrow again and again, until days turn into weeks, and then weeks turn into months, and then it's time for you to check out. It's time for you to be put in a box, and guess what? You never got around to letting your dream happen. People play all sorts of games with themselves to get out from underdoing what they need to do. They say to themselves that they're going to wait until things feel right. Well, I'm telling you, things will never feel right. Things will never feel perfect. You just have to trust your instincts, get in there, and jump in with both feet. Don't wait for everything to fall into place because they may never fall into place. You just have to make it happen. You just have to trust yourself enough to make it happen. And once you've started, turn it into a habit. Include it in your daily practices. It may seem like it will take time, but find the time. Eventually, you will look at your daily actions to achieve your big goals in life through the power of the law of attraction as a reward in and of itself. If you reach that point, congratulations, because you're well on your way to living an unstoppable life. This has been The Law of Attraction in Action, Putting the Law of Attraction into Action. Now 